Hi there, and welcome to this video where we'll be looking at an introduction to the Engineering Admissions Assessment for Cambridge. So if you want to study engineering at Cambridge, you'll need to take the ENGA or Engineering Admissions Assessment. This is a test of your physics and math skills, and what it's looking at is your capabilities to study engineering at Cambridge and potentially for your future career as an engineer as well. It's just one part of the admissions process. So like all other UK universities to study engineering at Cambridge, you'll need to submit a UCAS application, including a personal statement. Specifically at Cambridge, there will also be interviews if you're invited. And at some colleges, there may be a further written assessment at interview. But don't worry, if that applies to you, you'll be notified by the university. First of all, let's take a look at the format of the exam. So the ENGA is split into two sections, section one and section two, and section one is further split into part A and part B, and all of these are testing slightly different things and have slightly different formats. So starting with section one, you've got 60 minutes total to do part A and part B. Part A has 20 questions testing standard physics and maths. Part B also has 20 questions, and this time it's testing a more advanced level of physics and maths. Each question in section one is multiple choice, and you'll have choices from A to E. Section two also lasts 60 minutes, and it has 20 questions, and each of those questions you'll have a choice from A to F. Section two will be assessing specifically your advanced physics knowledge. So in terms of how the exam works, you'll be given a question booklet and an answer sheet. You'll have to complete the answer sheet in HB Pencil, and that's pretty much all you'll have in the exam. So the important thing to remember is that there is no calculator allowed. So any maths you do will have to be mental maths or handwritten maths. You also aren't allowed any extra paper, but if you need to do written working out, you can do that on the question paper. There's no marks for working out, it's simply completing that multiple choice and filling out one from the five or one from the six answers that you have as options. So next, let's look at how it's scored. Now, your raw mark out of 60 will be standardized onto a scale from one to nine. Higher scores on this scale are better. So a typical applicant is going to be scoring around a 4.0, and the top 10% of applicants will score 7.0 or above. So you can see this in this example score distribution from 2021 section one part A. Due to variability in the standardization process year on year, it's quite hard to say what raw score would convert to what final score in any given year. So therefore you should aim to do as well as you can rather than aiming tactically for a specific raw score as you don't know what that's going to convert into and whether it's going to be enough. There is no definite cutoff for getting an interview or an offer but we can have a look at some data about what the typical score of an offer holder might be. So for section one, the average score for an offer holder in 2021 was 6.6 .6 for part A and 7.5 for part B. And then for section two, the average score of an offer holder was 6.5. So as you can see, these are quite impressive high scores. So therefore it's a good idea to do as much preparation as you can for the ENGA as it's going to be competitive and you want to maximize your chances of securing an interview and an offer. However, it's important to note that the range of scores for offer holders was fairly large in this data set from 2021. This is a good reminder that the ENGA is just one part of the application process. A low score isn't going to automatically disqualify you, and a high score isn't going to automatically get you an offer. There's plenty of other things that come into play here, like your teacher reference, your personal statement, any contextual information, your performance in any further written tests, and your performance at interview. Finally, let's take a look at some key dates for the ENGA in 2022. So the registration deadline is the 30th of September. To take the ENGA, you'll need to register at a test centre. If you're currently at a school in the UK, it may be the case that your school is already registered as a test centre and you can speak to your exams officer and register with them. If it's not possible for you to take it at your school, there is a list of authorised test centres on the Cambridge Assessment website and you can register with one of them instead. It's important to remember that the 30th of September deadline is for the centre and not for you. So you need to make sure you get that application in in advance of the deadline so the centre have time to process it and submit it by 30th of September. 
If you need any access arrangements, there's some separate deadlines for that. So if you need modified papers, the deadline was the 16th of September 2022, and for all other access arrangements, it's the 30th of September. And then the date you'll sit the test itself will be the 19th of October. So you will find out your results for this test. They'll be released to you online on the 11th of January 2023. So that's our guide to the basics of the ENGA. If you check out the rest of our channel, there'll be more videos giving you specific tips on how to do as well as you can in section one and section two. Thanks for watching.